out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You find He's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out. Let's open our Bibles tonight to the Old Testament book of Psalms. We're going to look at Psalm 64. And Psalm 64 is a wonderful psalm by David, oppressed by the wicked, but rejoicing in the Lord. Maybe you're oppressed, but you can and should still rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice psalm in the 64. Lord always. So let's pray, shall we? Yes, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us tonight and Lord, for those who are oppressed by the wicked, Lord, help us to rejoice in you and help us to be encouraged through this word we're about to hear. In your name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. So David, through his life, has been feeling a lot of oppression from so many enemies within the family, outside, in the nation, outside the nation, so oppression from every quarter. But he was always able to find comfort in and to rejoice in the Lord. So this is a song that he has written, and he sends it to the chief musician, as he does the others. And uh, Kelly's going to read these 10 verses of Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded, and he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Beautiful, beautiful psalm. Oppressed, but still rejoicing. You and I have been oppressed in so many ways and perhaps still are. Maybe you're oppressed financially. I was listening to uh, Marketplace this morning on NPR and the number one concern we have right now in America is, and actually worldwide, is the economy. That's the main, the main concern. And uh, so maybe you're oppressed by the economy. Too much month, not enough dollars, rents going sky high in many areas and food so expensive and it goes on and on. The national grid, their, their, their bills just make your head spin. But trust in the Lord, rejoice in him. Maybe it's physical problems that you have. Maybe you're fighting uh, cancer or some other ailment uh, or COVID or whatever. But uh, whatever it is, you rejoice in the Lord and you look to him to be your deliverer. So the first two verses really deal with prayer for protection. Kelly's going to read the first two verses again, and we'll talk about it. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. So his songs are prayer. Praise songs should also incorporate prayer as well. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. So preserve my life not only from the enemy, but also even from the fear of it. Uh, we don't go far enough sometimes. We say, well, I don't want to have the enemy destroy me, but deal with fear as well. I don't even want the fear of it, Lord. Lord, help me to, be, to stay afloat financially. But go one step further and say, help me, Lord, not to even have fear of the economy. Keep me from COVID and other illnesses, but also keep me from the fear of it, Lord. Because you know, fear 
it can be just as powerful and deadly as the, at the situation itself. And it's been said many times that most things we fear never come to pass anyway. So when you can deal with fear, you've dealt with an awful lot. Doctors tell us that over 70% of your uh, ailments are psychosomatic. They're in your mind. You're fear-induced. If you can deal with the fear, you can deal with a lot of the causes and effects of it. So, Lord, preserve my life from fear of the enemy and from the enemy itself. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. And so this can be the work of people, be the work of Satan, can it? He's always working against us to steal, to kill, to destroy. He's always trying to bring us down. Deliver me, Lord, from those plots of his. Well, then verses 3 through 6 talk about the the problem of these malicious schemes that are coming against us from people and from Satan and whatever source. Look at verses 3 through 6 again. Let's look at 3 and 4, first of all. Who sharpen their tongues like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. That they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. So he talked about fear of the enemy and now he's talking about the tongue. Could it be that the biggest threat that we have towards us from other people is not that they're going to break our bones or they're going to kill us, but it's going to be the words that they say about us. They're going to speak against us. Fear and tongue stuck out to me. Fear in verse 1, tongue in verse 3. They sharpen their tongue like a sword, bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. Those are the things that can kill I us. Would, I was thinking about that. Uh, I won't say anybody's name, but I was thinking about someone who was on the news last year and who was saying on the CNN news, um, all the unvaccinated shouldn't leave their houses. They have no right to leave their houses and this and that. And I, I was looking at the old clips and I thought, well, weren't they wrong? We knew they were wrong. Um, from the rebellion of work, they sharpen their tongue like a sword. They bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. They were scaring people and they were pitting people against people. Yeah. It's wicked. Yeah. It's wicked when you do it with um, ethnicities, races. This is wicked. They pit people against people. That's what they're talking about. We have a modern version, but they were doing the same things. Yeah, exactly. You're, it was public. You're talking about Dr. Lena Wynn, who's the go-to doctor for CNN. She's not even an epidemiologist. She's a, 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 a emergency room doctor, and she was saying people who are unvaccinated should stay home. And um, in any event, that's that's her opinion. And but there um, were bitter words, and they were yeah. really feening a fire. Yep. to the people, because people Fear. watch that CNN, I don't, but most people do. So you people should be do. afraid of people who are unvaccinated, is what they were saying. So they were fearful, yeah. like yeah. you said, people, you know, I was thinking, I, n I never had that fear. Well, I was upset on my dad dying. I was grieving a lot, so, but that fear um, was really bad. They used that fear. They use fear to control people. Yeah. Look at the, uh, I don't look at Facebook or Twitter or that kind of stuff at all. Um, but uh, once in a while, Kelly will show me some things that uh, the, the kids say in the family or others. And, and uh, boy, when somebody is uh, in ill favor, they can just crucify you. Terrible. Uh, in social media, just crucify you. It's so sad. It's so, it's so wicked. Um, I um, actually had a praise today. Somebody's, I don't really get involved in other people's business usually, and never say anything on someone's, but I knew this girl, and she had some real legitimate things to say about um, someone in her family that has hurt her, and I get it, I really do, but I really felt really compelled to tell her not to dishonor her mom publicly, and I knew I was going to get a lot of backlash from it. They were all young, and of course, they ripped me, and I gave the answer and I gave the scripture. And I'm not denying that there's not hurt because there really is hurt for the kid. Um, but I, I just rejoice because they apologized to me. I never have that happen. I, that's why I never say anything. But they said because I was so graceful 
and how nice I explained it to them, and I didn't beat them up, and that I was looking out for their welfare, that they need to, to beat their mother up, even though they have legitimate claim. They do. There's some very serious things. But to beat the mother up publicly and to dishonor her, I was really concerned. I said, I'm concerned about your life too. And she said, thank you so much, and I apologize, and I hear what you're saying, and I just rejoice. But those words, you know, those kinds of words really can hurt people. And um, sometimes I realized that was good to go to them. It's good to go to someone and speak love to them. Do it all in love. That's right. And pray against those arrows that come against you, that they will fall and, and do no harm at all. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to talk about the malicious schemes against us. Verses 5 and 6. They discourage themselves in an they evil... They encourage. Oh, <laughs> they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme, but the inward thoughts and the heart of man are deep. And both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. So, Lord, protect me from these schemes, these snares. Help me to be able to see them and to uh, detect them. I talked about going in to Vietnam and how we had to be trained to be careful when we would uh, be in Vietnam in jungle warfare because they would lay mines. And they, not just Vietnam, in other areas, they're, they're laying mines over in, in Ukraine right now and elsewhere. It's just a very common tactic in the military. And it's uh, very, very hard to detect uh, these mines. In fact, in Vietnam, they used to take beautiful German shepherds and they would uh, train them to go before the uh, soldiers so that if there was a mine, the shepherd would blow up instead of, of the soldier. Um, Lord, there are, there are snares being laid for me. There are mines being laid for me. We don't want to live in fear, but let's be very practical. People are, and sometimes are against us. The devil's against us. And what about His people devices. that, like with this girl, she had some legitimate claim. Her, there's been things that have been done to her that were not right. And, and so she had some legitimate things against her mom. But I, as I'm reading this, um, we don't want it to be a snare. So even though the person maybe has hurt us, what can we do to still minister and be kind or honor that parent or whatever? We have to find ways to do that without putting ourselves out there because the Bible says both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. God reads our heart, right? God knows our hearts. So Lord, give me protection that I might be able to rejoice in you. He says in the last verses, 7 through 10, he has a prophecy here about divine judgment. I know you're going to give me judgment, Lord. You're going to give me victory. Let's read verses 7 through 10. Then this is where our victory comes from. When we're hurt or when we have a parent who's been nasty to us and we don't want to forgive them. And maybe sometimes we have to have boundaries. But this is where we look and we know God is able. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in him shall glory. All the upright. So we want to be mm -hmm. upright. Mm -hmm. We want to be considered the righteous. And how do we do that? So verse 7, God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Now they were shooting at us with an arrow, weren't they? Verse 3, bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, uh, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and they do not fear. Well, so Lord, you shoot at them with an arrow. And, um, and pray for them. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. So their tongues have been devising uh, tongues, evil like a The like tongue a is wicked. Sword. That's right. It's wicked. He said in verse 3, sharpen their tongue like they sharpen their tongues like on a sword. Mm -hmm. But here, Lord, I'm going to ask you to uh, make them stumble over their own tongue. So all the weapons they use, Lord, use those weapons against them. 
no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Thus saith Isaiah the Lord. Said. And so that's how it is today. For all these people that we hear all these crazy things and all that's going on, just pray, pray these scriptures. Pray these scriptures. Your prayers are powerful. And all who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. So I don't want to fear the enemy, Lord, but I do want to fear you. And I want for people to fear you and to honor you all over the world, uh, to declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. You see, when you and I can consider his doing, what he's up to and what he's doing, then we can fear him, we can praise him, we can follow him. Finally, verse 10, let's, let's, let's close with that. Sure, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. So the righteous, those who are his, those who have come to him through Christ, who is our righteousness, they shall be glad in the Lord. Maybe not glad in circumstances, maybe not glad in what's going on around the world, but you're glad in the Lord. They'll be glad in the Lord and they'll trust in him. Again, who is your trust in? Who are you trusting in? Not the spouse, not the family, not the, the Lord, money, the Lord. but the Lord. You're trusting in him. The psalmist says some will trust in horses and some in chariots, but we'll remember and trust in the name of the Lord our God. And all the upright in heart shall glory. You're going to glory in him. So David's able to handle fear. He's able to handle his enemies. He's able to handle all situations. And as we look back over the life of David, it was a life basically of, uh, of difficulty. He was a, just a young 16-year-old kid out there taking care of the sheep, minding his own business, and uh, God chose him and um, overlooked the older brothers and chose him. And all oh, that began a difficult, difficult time of having to uh, deal with, with one problem and after so another. And so many people think, oh, I wish I was like David. I wish I was chosen. So David, uh, as his first assignment, really had, after taking care of sheep, and as he took care of the sheep, that taught him how to take care of people. So as you're a shepherd over sheep, you can become a shepherd over people. Isn't you that see funny? How God I, uses those things to prepare us. Isn't that funny? Because we use our dogs a lot for stories and, and um, mm. analogies, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he was able to then move to praise as he took care of the demon spirit on Saul, the king. Saul was, had a demon spirit and... Uh, so he began to uh, praise. Some of these songs perhaps were developed. He developed his musical skills, his writing skills, and became a worshiper of God. And then he had to be able to dodge the, the uh, spear of Saul and the sword of Saul, as Saul was jealous of him and chased him all over. And then the Philistines were against him and they tried to kill him and he killed so many Philistines. And then he had the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Edomites and then his own family. Uh, he had Absalom against him and the, the problems there. So he was uh, always battling one problem after another. And then he had the problems with wives and children and uh, the affair with so Bathsheba. So for people that you think you have to have a perfect family to serve the Lord? Not at all. Not at all. And he was an ancestor of Jesus, and if you look at the lineage of Jesus, it was no cleaner and purer than your lineage, his human lineage. He had uh, prostitutes and he had uh, uh, people who were evil and on and on it goes. And so we have, um, our backgrounds are not All have pure. sinned and fall short of the glory That's of God. Right. No sin is worse than another. But the one thing about David, and I'm going to think about this uh, for the rest of my life, is that he loved God. Yes. He loved God with all of his heart. He spent his days and his nights worshiping him, loving him, and uh, praising him. Well, you can argue he had that affair with Bathsheba. Yeah, he did. And he had the husband killed. He did. And he did some other things that were wrong. But against that, you look at the fact that he loved God and he praised God. The Bible calls, then, uh, the, the, it, he calls God calls him a man after his own heart. He was. He, and so for you, my friend, I hope you know the Lord we're going to give you a chance to receive him. Kelly's going to lead us in a little uh, sinner's prayer in a moment. And uh, give your heart to Christ. And, and uh, you've, you've sinned, I've sinned, we've all sinned. All sinned but, and fall short of the glory but, but of God. Love him. Get up in the middle of the night, 
But when you have to, and then praise him and thank him. May it always be about just loving him. And uh, did we find, did we, yep. did we lose our, there it is. You know, the, the uh, salvation is easy, as easy as ABC. I like to keep things simple. A, B, C, A, for admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus died on the cross. Amen. And rose again as the payment for your sins. And C, confess Jesus publicly. So Kelly's going to give us the ABCs and then give us a chance to pray. Amen. I know. I'm just thinking. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If these scriptures speak to your heart and you're ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray with us. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I admit I am a sinner. I admit I am a sinner. And I repent of my sins. And I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And was raised from the dead. And was raised from the dead. As payment for those sins. As payment for those sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for my new spiritual life. Thank you, Lord, for my new spiritual life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Find a church in your area that's faithfully teaching his word, and then you'll be faithful to attend it. You'll grow, you'll mature, and you'll be a blessing to them as they are a blessing to you as well. If we can help you here at Reach Out, just email us at reachoutchurch at gmail.com, and you can also uh, go online and, uh, and have fellowship. We have the whole Bible taught verse by verse at Reach Out. Uh, fellowship.com. That's reachoutfellowship.com. God bless you. And until the next time, shalom. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach